On Ash Wednesday at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in Springfield, ashes were distributed as usual to mark the beginning of this holy season and to remember Christ's suffering and death on the cross. But this year, the day also served as a way for parishioners to remember another somber and tragic event, the dropping of the atomic bomb on Nagasaki during World War II. Steve Kiltonic has our story. In August 1945, while the United States was still at war with Japan, President Harry S. Truman authorized the use of atomic bombs on a civilian population. The first was dropped August 6th on the city of Hiroshima. The second occurred three days later on the port city of Nagasaki. Over 90,000 lives were lost instantly at Hiroshima, and at least 39,000 died at Nagasaki, which at that time had the largest percentage of Catholics in Japan. The Catholic Church was one of the few structures left standing. The bombs were used to hasten the end of the war and to avoid what was expected to be a full-scale invasion of Japan, where thousands of Americans would have likely died. Others claimed the bombs weren't necessary, that the Japanese were ready to surrender. Historians will continue to debate the opposing viewpoints for generations. At Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, Father Robert White says Catholics have had a presence in Nagasaki for centuries. The first missionaries to the Far East were the Jesuits, who arrived in Japan in 1549. St. Francis Xavier landed in Japan quite near Nagasaki, and he had several companions with him, uh, and they uh, began to preach and, and attract converts to Christianity. St. Francis stayed only a short time, leaving to continue his missionary work in China. It was Father Viela who took over the mission in Japan. He was the one who really developed Christianity in Japan at that time, so that within about 10 or 15 years, the population of Nagasaki, as I recall, was about 25 or 26,000 people, and the majority of them were Christian, were Catholic. Nagasaki became known as the Rome of Japan, as 130,000 were converted during the ensuing 30 years. But Catholics became the scapegoats for other national problems, and were later persecuted, tortured, and killed for their beliefs. While many Catholics were forced to worship in secret, Christianity was never fully stamped out. By the mid-19th century, Japanese Catholics were allowed to rejoin the church. At the time of the Second World War, Nagasaki was populated by a thriving Catholic community. Father White wanted to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Nagasaki bombing in a special way. We're losing so many of the veterans of World War II, so many millions and millions of those men and women who really saved democracy for the world are dying off. Many of the uh, fathers and mothers of my parishioners uh, served in the military at, in World War II, and so I wanted to remember them and commemorate them. I wanted to connect us with the Catholic community there that also suffered uh, t terribly during World War II. And uh, I thought, well, Ash Wednesday and Lent is a time when we begin to focus on our Lord's own passion and, and suffering. So it's a, I thought it was a good reminder that uh, war is such a terrible experience for people. It's so devastating for everyone. As it turns out, Father White knows someone who lives in Japan, a former parishioner named Bill Fagoni. Fagoni is an associate professor in English at Kendai University in Osaka, where he lives with his wife and son. Father White asked Fagoni if he could find something appropriate in which to distribute ashes. Fagoni chose three porcelain bowls called Arita or Imari ware, which were manufactured by a company called Fukagawa Seji. They have been producing fine porcelain since the 17th century and became famous when it won the gold prize in 1900 at the International Exposition in Paris. The three bowls together symbolize the Japanese suffering during the war. One bowl features cranes and is finished in the trademark Fukagawa blue in almost translucent white. The crane, of course, is for the Japanese a symbol of fidelity because uh, in their tradition a crane lives a thousand years and mates only once. And so for them it's a sign of fidelity and faithfulness. And what a beautiful way to think about that Christian community that went through so many ups and downs of persecution and the people of war, that they remain faithful to the church. Another bowl shows golden cherry blossoms, the national flower of Japan on a vermilion background. Cherry blossoms are, of course, a sign of new life. 
and that's the national flower of Japan. And also, you know, brings us to the idea of springtime and Easter. The third bowl is formed in the shape of a pale chrysanthemum, which is a national symbol and seal of the imperial family. The green one, of course, the symbol of hope, the symbol of hope, color of hope, that we look forward to the new life of Christ. Sister Betty Matuzik is the parish's pastoral assistant. Well, year after year, people receive ashes as a personal sacred symbol of mortality and commitment to the season of Lent and the practice of life in the gospel. And I think this dimension on the 70th anniversary brings us closer and closer to that reality that it broadens what we do in an individualistic way and brings home a sense of the whole world, a sense of our Catholic world to our Catholic practice. Father White believes the bowls will resonate with parishioners because Italian-Americans here have always had a strong devotion to the cross and the passion of Christ. These are going to be used in the parish for every Ash Wednesday, I hope, at least as long as I'm here. <laughs> and I hope beyond that, I think they should become part of the, the tradition here. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. The bowls will serve as a constant reminder for parishioners of this historic event, expanding a personal ritual into a global context.